right we have finished our ordinary share capital note and then we want to continue to 2.2 where we are required to calculate the following financial indicators on 28 february 2021 the first one is operating expenses on sales and the formula is easy when it is percentage operating expenses on sales the formula will be operating expenses over sales so our operating expenses according to information p our operating expenses is 1 million 458,600 1 million 458,600 that's our operating expenses 1 million 458,600 over sales over sales which is seven million two hundred and ninety three thousand multiplied by one hundred equals to one million four hundred and fifty eight thousand six hundred one million four hundred and fifty eight thousand six hundred divided by seven million two hundred and ninety three thousand multiplied by one hundred that's twenty percent operating expenses on sales is 20 percent so our operating expenses on sales is 20 percent right and then the next one that we need to calculate is dividends per share and when you go to information a your interim dividend is 162,000 that's the interim dividend and this 162,000 was paid on the 30th of September and the total number of shares issued on the 30th of September 2020, when you go to information A, at the beginning we had 800,000 shares, and then on 30 June we issued 100,000, that was 900,000. And then another change was on the 1st of January, which is after the interim dividend. So the interim dividend was paid on the 30th of September, which then tells us that the shares, the total number of shares at that time was 900,000. So we want to calculate the interim dividend per share. The interim dividend per share, 162,000 divided by 900,000. It's 18 cents. The interim dividend is 18 cents. Is 18 cents plus the final dividend, which is 22 cents. So, which is clear that 18 plus 22. The interim dividend is 18 cents and the final dividend is 22 cents per share. So, the total dividends per share is 40 cents per share. That's the correct amount. amount. Dividends per share is 40 cents. Remember, dividends is made up of interim plus final. So the interim dividend per share was not given. We were given the total amount for interim dividends. So therefore, we had to calculate the interim dividend by dividing by the number of shares in issue at the time when we paid the interim dividend, which was 900,000, and we got 18 cents per share. So 18 cents per share plus 22 cents per share final dividend that is giving a total of 40 cents per share. Return on average shareholders' equity. The formula is net profit after tax, which is 985,500. Net profit after tax over average shareholders' equity. Shareholders' equity, you have 6,450,000. That's 2020 plus 2021, which is 8 million and 38,100 and 38,100 all this is divided by 2 multiplied by 100 the average net profit after tax over average shareholders equity let's calculate the average shareholders equity 985,500 net profit after tax 985,500 over average shareholders equity Six million four hundred and fifty thousand. Six million four hundred and fifty thousand plus eight million and thirty-eight thousand one hundred. Eight million and thirty-eight thousand one hundred. Eight million and thirty-eight thousand one hundred equals to divided by two. 
seven million two hundred and forty four thousand and fifty seven million two hundred and forty four thousand and fifty multiplied by one hundred nine hundred and eighty five thousand five hundred divided by seven million two hundred and forty four thousand and fifty seven million two hundred and forty four thousand and fifty times one hundred equal to thirteen point six percent that's thirteen point six percent the return on average shoulders equity is thirteen point six percent which is not bad when it is compared to an alternative investment of fixed deposit which ranges from eight to ten percent so this is thirteen point six percent the return on average shoulders equity is thirteen point six percent that it was five marks and the formula of calculating this is net profit after tax over the average shoulders equity average shoulders equity is shoulders equity at the beginning plus shoulders equity at the end equal sign and divide by two right 2.3 complete the cash flow statement for the year ended 28 february 2021 certain figures are provided in the answer book certain figures are provided in the answer book yes the cash generated from operating activities is provided cash generated from operations was not required interest paid not required so what is required of us is taxation paid taxation paid and dividends paid Let's start with the easy one, the dividends paid. Dividends paid, you just need shareholders for dividends at the beginning plus your interim. Your shareholders for dividends at the beginning, in this case, is 115,300. Beginning is 115,300. This is what you pay every year. You must start by paying the amount owing at the beginning. And then the another amount that you need to pay is your interim, which in this case is 162,000. So it's your shareholders for dividends at the beginning plus your interim because the final dividend is not paid in the current year. The final dividend is declared in the current year and paid in the following year. So 115,300 plus 162,000 equals to 277,300. 277,300 which is in bracket. 277,300 in bracket for dividends paid. Taxation paid, you have your income tax for the year. Your income tax for the year, uh, you have what? Your income tax for the year was not given. You have net profit before tax, 1,350,000 in your question paper, 1,350,000 before tax, minus. 985,500 after tax. You have your before tax minus your after tax. So your income tax for the year is 364,500. You were given the net profit before tax and the net profit after tax. So you just needed to calculate the difference between the two amounts, which is 364,000. And then plus your SARS at the beginning. If it is on the credit side, your SAR said the beginning is on the credit side, so that's a plus 35,900. And then minus your SAR said the end, which is 29,900. But in this case, because it is not on the credit side, it is supposed to be a minus if it is on the credit side. But because it is not on the credit side, we are going to change the sign to be a plus. That's 29,100. Plus 29,000. The beginning should be a plus and the end should be a minus if everything is on the credit side. So if, you, if it is on the debit side, then the beginning will change to be a minus and the end will change to be a plus. That is why we have changed the end, the SAR at the end now to be a plus. It was supposed to be a minus, but because the sign is the debit side, we are now changing it to be a plus. So our taxation paid will be 364,500. 364,500 plus 35,900 plus 29,100. 
So this is our income tax paid, this is in bracket, 429,500. Income tax paid is 429,500. Cash flows from investing activities, which is purchase of fixed assets, sale of fixed assets, and investment in fixed deposit has already been done for us, which is 1,320,000. Cash flows from financing activities, which is the proceeds from the issue of shares and the buyback of shares, we have done it. So the only thing that is left now here is loan, change in loan. which is under financing activities. Our loan <coughs> was how much? Our loan was 2,200,000. 2,200,000. Minus 1,650,000. 1,650,000. 2,200,000 minus 1,650,000. Let's calculate that change from 2,200,000 to 1,650,000. 2,200,000 minus 1,650,000. That is 550,000. So the change is 550,000. And because it was 2,200,000, it went down to 1,650,000. It means we paid. So this 550,000 is an outflow of cash. The buyback of shares is also an outflow of cash because we paid. But the proceeds from the issue of shares, we sold shares and we received money. So this is an inflow of cash. So it's not indicated in bracket. Right, so let's get the total for the financing activities. The total for the financing activities. Finance, the issues of finance, you must know. Because most of the students, they forget what goes under financing activities. The issues of finance, the company is mainly financed by issuing shares. And if that money is not enough, we then take a loan. So that is why we have two transactions relating to shares, the issuing of shares and the buyback of shares and the one and the last one which is loan. Those are the issues of finance. Under investing activities, how does the company invest money? We invest by buying fixed assets, selling of fixed assets and we also sometimes go to an extent of depositing money in a fixed deposit as a form of investment. But in this case, our investing activities have already been done and it's one million 320,000. So let's calculate our total for financing activities. 1,250,000 minus 291,000 minus 550,000. 409,000 positive. 409,000 positive. Because we have the three totals. One, two, we can be able to calculate the net change. It's 1,180,000, 1,180,000 minus 1,320,000 plus 409,000 equals to our net change is a positive 269,000 positive 269,000. That's our net change. That's, that's the total of the three sections. The operating activities, the investing activities, and the financing activities. Cash and cash equivalents at the beginning of the year. Let's look at our cash and cash equivalents. That is information C. Our cash and cash equivalents at the beginning, petty cash is 20,000, but there is an overdraft of 95,200. So that will be, that will be 20,000 minus 95,200. That will be 75,200 in bracket. 20,000 is positive minus 95,200 overdraft at the end. That's a negative 75,200. And then to calculate cash and cash equivalents at the end, because it was not given here, 
it will then be net change of 269,000 minus 75,200 equals to 198,300. Cash and cash equivalence at the end is 193,800. Cash flow statement. Cash flow statement is simple and straightforward. The student needs to make sure that the tax you are able to calculate the taxation paid. It should be the income tax amount, which is always positive. Your SARS at the beginning should be a plus if it's on the credit side, and the minus if the end is a minus if it's on the credit side. But if it is on the debit side, you change the sign the beginning to be a minus and the end to a plus. Your dividends paid is just simply your shareholders for dividends at the beginning plus your interim dividend. Your investing activities. That's buying fixed assets, selling fixed assets, and investing in fixed deposit. Three things will go under investing activities. Your financing activities, two transactions relating to the issuing of shares, that's the proceeds from the issue of shares, and the buyback of shares, and also your loan. And then your net change in cash and cash equivalents, you can be able to calculate it comparing the cash and cash equivalents at the beginning and the cash and cash equivalents at the end. But in this case, the cash and cash equivalents at the end was not given. So then we had to use the three totals to get the net change. But it should be the same amount whether you are using cash and cash equivalents at the beginning and cash and cash or you are adding the three totals. But the net change should always be, it should always give you the same amount. So in this case, our net change in cash and cash equivalents is 269,000 minus cash and cash equivalents at the beginning 75,200 equals to 193,800. So this is the end of our question two. Our question two was based on share capital, financial indicators, and cash flow statement. And it was only 35 marks, and the candidate had to write this question in 25 minutes. We are encouraging students to make sure that when they are watching these lessons, these videos, they must have the question paper at hand and also their calculators and make sure that they do the calculations uh, which we are doing on the board. So good luck on your studies. Thank you very much.